Good morning and welcome to Farm Factor. I'm your host, Jamie Bloom. On today's program, Kyle Bauer visits with Mark Reisinger from Pivot Bio about a new technology that uses microbes to produce nitrogen in soil. Then enjoy this week's Kansas soybean update. Next, Dwayne Taves talks with Mike Cruzy with Cargill Market Guide about helping producers navigate the global market. Then it's this week's Kansas Farm Bureau update and we'll end with plain talk with Kyle and Dwayne. Stay with us. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome to Farm Factor. Up first today, Kyle Bauer talks with Mark Reisinger about Pivot Bio and their cutting edge nitrogen product. Hi, this is Kyle Bauer visiting with Mark Reisinger with Pivot Bio. You may not have heard of that company because their technology, their concept, and the product that they have is completely new and really revolutionary. Absolutely, for about 40 years, the industry has been chasing the idea of producing nitrogen in the plant. And the two founders of our company that met in graduate school, getting their PhD, came up with a revolutionary process that instead of getting the plant to produce nitrogen, they found a way to uh, uh, help a, a microbe produce nitrogen for the plant itself so we can avoid synthetic nitrogen and produce it organically in soil. So after all these years, we're finally there. Um, how does it work? So what you do is you apply this microbe when you plant the seed. You put it down in furrow as a liquid across the seed as you're planting it. As the seed germinates and that taproot drops down, the microbe will embed and begin to colonize along the root system. The microbe only feeds off the exudates, the sugars and carbons being produced by the corn plant. So if the corn plant survives, the microbe survives. And between V5, the life cycle of that corn plant, and R4, which is when the corn plant is historically storing the most nitrogen per acre, about 2.3 to 2.5 pounds a day, this microbe is going to produce 25 pounds of nitrogen. So this isn't completely going to fill the, the nitrogen needs? It isn't. So people are still going to need to run synthetic nitrogen. But what this is going to allow them to do is to either supplement side dressing or replace side dressing on their farm. We know that when we deliver nitrogen in season, we get the highest utilization. We lose the least nitrogen. This product doesn't leach because it's actually bound to the epidermis of the root system of the corn plant. So you don't lose any. You get the full value of the 25 pounds. We tell people maybe instead of mechanically side dressing, you would choose to ecologically side dress. Now, it's not available yet in Kansas. It's only in trials in Kansas. It is available in Nebraska and Iowa and Ohio and Indiana and many states. But in Kansas this year, we're still testing it. We have to seek state regulatory authority. And Kansas' process is just a little bit longer. But we're very excited to launch in Kansas with these trials this year. And hopefully next year, we'll be able to sell it commercially. And with this technology, you can use that on any seed that you prefer to use. Uh, well, it's only available on corn uh, this cycle, but yes, any hybrid. But any hybrid, any brand. Absolutely. We've tested across a multitude of hybrids. Uh, we, we've made sure to capture the top 30% of the market. So those hybrids that are sold at the highest percentage in the areas in which we're selling. So we've probably tested against that hybrid. We've been testing for five years. We have over 5,000 plots out there. We've got a lot of good research. And uh, last year, we had 24 of the largest farmers in the United States test with us. We call it the Intent to Pivot Trials. We just gave them the product and said, we know we can do it, but can they do it with our product? Because everybody expects the company to be able to. All 24 of our growers have either signed up back for new trials, or if they're in a commercial state, they've brought our product already this year. So we're feeling pretty good about our product. Visiting with Mark Reisinger, he's with Pivot Bio, a new product for corn growers. This is Kyle Bauer reporting. Back to you, Jamie. Thanks, Kyle. The Kansas Soybean Update is coming up next here on Farm Factor. Stay tuned. To see this show and past episodes of Ag AM in Kansas, go online to agamincansas.com. 
Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. This segment is brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Welcome back to Farm Factor and the Kansas Soybean Update. This is the Kansas Soybean Update. It's brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Kurt Marth from Oakley serves as chairman of the Kansas Soybean Commission. And Kurt, the Kansas Soybean Commission was one of five state grain commodity commissions whose results of recent elections for District 7, 8, and 9 were announced by the Kansas Department of Agriculture. In District 7, Gary Robbins is going to be the commissioner for that district. He grows soybeans in Pottawatomie County. Gary is a fourth-generation farmer from Hazleton. He is a current member of several commodity and community organizations, including the Kansas Soybean Association, the Kansas Corn Association, and Kansas Wheat Association. Gary is a past participant in the DuPont Young Leaders Program and the Sagina Leadership Program. Gary takes the place as Jim Swaninger, who has served since 2004. Jim will be missed by all as he's been a longtime commissioner and has filled the position very well. In District 8, we didn't have anybody running in for that position, so the commission has appointed Bob Hazelwood to fill that position. Bob has been serving there for quite a few years, so he is very familiar with the commission and what processes that we take care of. In District 9, Mike Beller was elected. He is a soybean, corn, wheat, and hog farmer in Elk County. He is very active in several associations, including the Kansas Soybean Association, the Kansas Wheat Growers, Kansas Corn, and Kansas Farm Bureau. He's also in the Kansas Livestock Association and Kansas Pork Association. He has also been involved with leadership roles on the local farm credit board, the Farm Service Agency, County Committee, and local Farm Bureau Board. Beller is a graduate of Fort Hay State University of the BS in Ag Business, and he has also been serving in this position for a while, so he also understands what the commission, and he's very focused on watching over the checkoff dollars and how it's being spent for the Kansas soybean farmers in Kansas. Now, those three positions were for Eastern Kansas District positions. I know there's going to be elections for the central counties, districts four, five, and six, and uh, those who are interested in that position, that's due later this year? Yes, it is. Usually they are due by November 30th of the year. So if anybody's interested in serving in a commission position, they need to go online to the KDA and you can pick up the petition that you have to fill out. What you have to do is get 20 signatures from area farmers in your area to sign them up to vote in the commodity elections. That's Kurt Marth from Oakley, who serves as chairman of the Kansas Soybean Commission. He joins us on the Kansas Soybean Update. It's brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Learn more at kansassoybeans.org. For Kansas Soybeans, I'm Greg Akagi. Hope you enjoyed this week's Kansas Soybean Update. Stay with us after the break for more with Dwayne Taves and Mike Cruzy. What if U.S. soybean oil were an industry sensation? If end users started asking for it by name? That future is here, the time is now. To meet customer demands, the Soybean Checkoff is investing in varieties that produce oil with increased functionality. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. All over the country, 
More and more communities are making the change to biodiesel, made from U.S. soybean oil. And the decision continues, improving the health and welfare for millions of Americans, while adding billions to our national economy. Kim Mannering with Hardy Insurance. Today we will talk about employee safety and work comp coverage. On your farm, do you ask your friends to come help? Are they considered employees? or neighbors helping neighbors. Did you know that you can be held responsible just as if it's a work comp accident? Give me a call, we can discuss. 316-945-6733. This segment brought to you by SureCrop, liquid crop nutrition delivered right to your farm. We're back. Now we learn more about navigating global markets with Dwayne Tates and Mike Cruzy. Dwayne Taves joining you once again here on Ag AM in Kansas and an opportunity to catch up with Mike Cruzy with Cargill Market Guide. Mike, tell us a little bit about the program and how Cargill continues to work with growers. Okay, well Cargill Market Guide was introduced to work individually with farmers to help in their marketing and we found that the toughest thing they've had the last couple of years is just execution. Uh, they'll have a number that they'll say they'll sell at and then we'll get there and then obviously environmental factors will change and then we find out in the fall we didn't have near enough sold. So what we sit down with is we use Cargill's worldwide knowledge and expertise on markets and then we customize and individualize that plan across the kitchen table. So you know we have found that one neighbor across the road might haul in everything at harvest and the other neighbor might put everything in a bin and we have different financial needs and so we'll put in goals, we'll look at profitability and really break down those numbers to help them execute more. The reality is that you referenced there's as many different uh, appropriate marketing plans as, as there are producers because everybody in fact has different needs, goals and outcomes. That's absolutely right and you know the last couple of years not real great years financially for farming and now you're in a pickle where you don't want to leave a nickel or dime on the table. And so even though you might both agree, yeah, that number does work for me next year, but I don't want to leave a dime on the table if it's something that goes up. And we've raised three, four record crops in a row. You know, your mindset is we're due not to, and boy, I don't want that be the year that I get too much sold early on. So we'll individually work with that. There's strategies we can put in place that maybe it gives you a floor to protect that profitable level with some upside if that's what you're after. So very individualized, um, and as you know, everybody has a different comfort level on how they want to market, and we kind of fine-tune that. Obviously, some people are more risk-averse uh, than others, depending on their situation, uh, like you say. But uh, the realities are we're in a global uh, consumerism, we're in a global production uh, business of producing food and fiber, and, and that means uh, the reality are that uh, we need to work with individuals that have a global perspective uh, to try and make as much sense of the marketing needs that we can. Yeah, I think absolutely. You know, sometimes we have our blinders on in our little corner of the world, and you know, real soon here when our harvest finishes up, we'll start focusing pretty hard on South America soybean production. And so just got done with Russia weed, and we know the drought and the experience they had over there. So it really is a world market, and uh, knowing what's going on around the world, hopefully we can help you make better decisions. We think about uh, opportunities to market. Uh, a lot of guys are, are hesitant, and you referenced, uh, they may pick a number, but then when it gets there, they, they don't pull the trigger. It's interesting that they'll, they'll listen to the agronomist that says X number of pounds of N. Uh, they'll, they'll listen to the, to the crop advisor on the herbicide that we need to use. But typically, uh, farmers haven't been the greatest about using market advisors where the real dollars and cents can be made or lost. Yeah, and I know we're doing quite a bit in advance. You know, if you're in an irrigated country like where I come from, Nebraska, but you're working with a number that's kind of a moving target as well. If you knew for sure you were going to raise X amount of bushels, it'd be a little easier maybe to sell in advance. Um, you know, we can utilize crop insurance to maybe make you feel more comfortable making a sale. But you're absolutely right. You know, we agree to a number and we try and plug in a conservative number. APHs have climbed up the last few years, so we've got good numbers. But use a number that the com customer feels comfortable that he thinks he can raise at the start of the year and then work percentages off of that. Our thanks to Mike Cruzy with Cargill uh, Market Guide joining us on Ag AM in Kansas. Jamie, we'll send it back to you. Thanks, Dwayne. Come back after the break for this week's Kansas Farm Bureau update.
Hello, I'm Dr. Frank Lyons from Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center here in Manhattan, Kansas. Daryl was one of our patients that we did about seven months ago. I dug trees by hand for years and years and years. In the process, I wore up my rotator cuff. But when I learned about this process, I thought if there was a way to get rid of this pain, then I, then I wanted to do it. So we did it and it worked. I'm not going to go out and take trees with a shovel anymore, but then I can do the things that I want to do now. Well, it's been very gratifying to help people with their painful joints and other uh, entities, and it's been especially gratifying to be able to help people who I know and have worked with and known for many years. Join us for the 4th Annual Meeting Demand Sale at Gardner Angus Ranch, Monday, May 13th at 10 a.m. Up for sale are 173 20-month-olds and 250 bred commercial cows and heifers, including the complete dispersal of longtime Gardner customer Yolo Ranch. Catalog available at GardnerAngus.com. Register for online bidding at LiveAuction.tv. At Gardner Angus Ranch, you aren't just buying a breed. You are buying a brand backed by four generations of disciplined seed stock production. See you May 13th at the ranch. As fourth generation farmers themselves, Heinen Brothers Ag Service understands the risk and rewards of farming. So when it comes to quality aerial and ground application, fertilizer, ag chemicals, and anhydrous ammonia, call Heinen Brothers Ag today, 800 760 4964. This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to Farm Factor and the Kansas Farm Bureau Update. Kim and Carla Boone operate a family farm in Greenwood County. Along with Sun Brants, they own and operate 500 acres of cropland and own a 240 head Brangus and Angus cross cow herd. Additionally, Kim and Carla have a partnership on another 150 head of cattle. Kim and Carla began their Farm Bureau involvement as active members on the Young Farmers Committee at the county level, and Carla has served on the state level as YFNR Committee Vice Chairman. Both have served as County Farm Bureau Presidents, and Kim has served on both KFB's Oil Seeds Advisory Committee and the Hay and Forage Committee. The Boons are members of the Neal Evangelical Free Church. Kim and Carla have served as extension board members and both keep busy volunteering with their local 4-H club. The Boons know individual agricultural producers are limited to what they can do alone, but by uniting a large group of producers, they can educate the public about agriculture to make an atmosphere where agriculture can thrive. The couple believe Kansas Farm Bureau is doing just that. Stay with us. We'll be back after the break with Plain Talk. KFRM is one of the largest farm radio stations in the nation, dedicated to informing and entertaining rural listeners from northern Oklahoma to southwestern Nebraska. You can catch KFRM in many ways. Of course, 550 on the AM dial, streaming at KFRM.com, or on your smartphone by going to the TuneIn Radio app, or on Ag AM in Kansas on Tuesdays, and Facebook every day of the week. KFRM, tune us in. You'll be glad you did. Surecrop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas, we work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yet we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'll be glad to answer and work with you. 
Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. This segment brought to you by Kansas Corn. Learn more at kscorn.com. Welcome back. Now let's see what Kyle and Dwayne are up to on this edition of Plain Talk. Hi, this is Kyle Bauer with Plain Talk with the man who was more comfortable with horsepower when it actually was horses. Dwayne Taves. Oh, no, I don't think so. You like your horsepower Everybody in that bottle? says, boy, I wish I lived back in the 1800s, it's like you got a very delusional thought process oh, of what the 1800s Me were too. really like. Now, there's plenty of opportunities to <laughs> live it on the rough for a week or so if you want to really do that. Uh, and most take your can. insulated thermos <laughs> along and... Yeah, yeah, and well, they didn't have that, and, pack, and that's what I mean. It's and like packaged food, no, and no, camp out, yeah. no high dollar cooler to keep and, food cold. Well, how about the clothes you get to wear? Yeah. So, yeah, um, I do like authentic movies though that do, that do show the authentic clothes, and wow, they look uncomfortable. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they just weren't terribly well made. No. I mean, the patterns were pretty general. Yeah, it's like. I I think, you know, jeans might have been small, medium, and large. Yeah. Which one are you going to be today? Today, exactly. <laughs> it's like, who? Yeah, yeah, not the most comfortable. Your fact or fiction question of the day, Kyle Bauer. The New York State official muffin is cranberry. Fact or fiction? New York State. I don't know them as being a cranberry state. There is a cranberry state up in New England. I can't remember which one. And there, are, of course, is up in Wisconsin. I would say fiction. It is fiction. It's apple. Apple. The apple muffin. Apple muffins from so New York State. So what's the official state. muffin of Kansas? I think it's a, is it a brand muffin. Brand muffin. <laughs> there you go. We Wheat got brand. Lot, we got a lot of brand Wheat here. Wheat brand muffin. Yeah. There you go. You know, I don't think people in the state of Kansas understand how much flour milling we do in the state of Kansas. Oh, it's they know lot. we're the flour. I mean, we are the wheat, wheat state, state, but they don't understand how. I mean, there's a, a lot, lot of people of don't just eat wheat berries. <laughs> no, no, I've eaten my share, and they're really not all that tasty. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. You know, it's more fun to process it and make something out of it. Yes, and and I'm glad that we do the milling here. Which there are years it's not very convenient to mill wheat here in Kansas because it depends the, on what the quality of the wheat is. Well, for specifically the protein. Yeah. The protein has to be a certain spec and around 11.5 to 12% to make bread. And if we don't have any wheat, that area, they have to bring in spring wheat to blend when? with it to bring up the protein. And getting spring wheat into Kansas is not in a very efficient it's transportation kind of, system. Kind of expensive to bring her down yeah, south. Because the trains don't run straight no. and trucks are expensive way to haul it. So, the um, I, again, I don't think the average person understands the baker maybe makes bread, but that bread, that flour that that baker starts with is in an exact spec every day. Right. And so if we make, I'll just pick a number, a million McDonald's, uh, buns a day hmm. all over the United States. And no matter what store you go in, that bun looks exactly the same every day. Right. And that's because that miller made that flour to the baker exactly the same every With day. the same characteristics when it bakes to the same color when it browns. When it rises. Sure. The, the yield, the whole thing. And so it's um it's quite an industry and that's our food system is an amazing system here in the United States that I mean all the way from trucking uh, to the rail to storage to the technologies that's involved with storing it you know there's right. a lot of the world they lose a huge amount of their harvest during the storage process because right. you can't eat it all the day you harvest no kind of need to spread that out over say 12 months and the um, the grain has to be down to more or less thirteen percent or less in order to stir, store, stir the store. If you stir the store, then it might not mold. 
Yeah, maybe not. Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Jamie Bloom, and I hope you enjoyed today's show. See you next week on Farm Factor. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. To see this show and past episodes of Ag AM in Kansas, go online to agamincansas.com.